Uh, today was the second day in the conduct of the pre of the Uganda Certificate of Education UCE examination for senior four candidates. The day went on well. We did have good weather. We want to thank the Lord for that. We want to thank God for everybody who had been involved in today's examinations in the conduct. We had um, a smooth um, a smooth day, Morris. Uh, the candidates were writing chemistry practical. That was my, for morning, and then we had uh, Miss Koro in the afternoon. Chemistry practical is a, well, it's uh, most of the practical sessions because of the requirements, the laboratory space, and then the equipment. In most cases, if a center has a number of, can have many candidates, we allow them to do the examination in shifts. However, they all get in at the same time and then they get into, they get confined, they get into confinement. So most schools have different shifts. Some of them had two shifts, others had three shifts. My paper is two hours, so we expect that maybe the first shift will finish from maybe 9 to 11. Then another, another shift can start around 11 30 to until the next two hours, until all of them are finished. So all went well, we did not get any major challenges at all our centers. The papers were delivered in good time. The schools received the advanced instructions to enable them to put in place the requirements and everything that is required. And uh, I think uh, the paper went on well. Although, of course, with um, chemistry practical, that's one of the papers where schools tend to do malpractice. We call the, the external assistants. People can be around pretending to be lab assistants because they, they allow the lab assistants to be there to provide the equipment, to provide the chemicals that are required. And uh, there's a particular case of um, a school in um, a school in Kagadi that uh, is said to have you know, the candidates just kind of did not even do the practical, but they were filling in their answers. And uh, the scout was wondering before working with the practical, they're already filling in the answers and they are getting finished. They have not touched the vice but they don't touch the chemical, they don't touch the Z, whatever it is. So I put that being submitted and we are going to investigate that uh, we are going to investigate that school and establish what exactly happened, how come they were able to write the answers without doing the practical, yes, it is a, yet it is a practical examination. You have another case in Kagadi still where it is a case of impersonation. We suspect it's impersonation. Two candidates allegedly yesterday interchanged their index numbers, a boy and a girl, both of them are repeaters. A boy and a girl, they interchanged their index numbers. A boy put the girl's index number and the girl put the boy's index number. Clearly a case of impersonation, we think. And then today they did the same thing. So today they were brought to book and uh, we are going to still investigate the case and see how far this is going to go. We do suspect it's a case of uh, impersonation. That kind of impersonation means the head of center is involved. And now we would like to caution all heads of center, especially in the Rizori region. Today we received many reports from the Rizori region, from Kokoto, uh, from Kagadi, from Kabarore, cases of suspected malpractice. We are going to review the reports and, uh, the, and uh, if uh, in case they are found to be um, viable, you will appear before the security committee. But we want to caution the heads of centers, please do not get the learners involved in malpractice. This time round, before we used to have malpractice cases, once it's proven beyond reasonable doubt, the candidates' uh, results are cancelled and they are advised to repeat. And uh, at times you find that the adults who are involved, the heads of centers, those who provide external assistance, they go away scot free. This time round, the act is very clear. We are going, you, you two are also culpable, and you're committing an offense by aiding and abetting malpractice. And uh, the fine for that is 40 million or 10 years, of, 10 years in jail or both. We want to appeal to heads of centers. We want to appeal to directors of schools in the referee region, please, desist from involving in malpractice. If you've been teaching the learners, let them be able to study on their own. Let them write on their own. Let's assess, let's see how much knowledge they've acquired. It's better for them to get low marks and they get the results cancelled. So we want to appeal to the heads of center, the directors, all over the country, but specifically Rizal region, because we received many reports implying that there are cases of malpractice in that area. So we want to caution you. Tomorrow is mathematics, and our scouts are very alert. Anybody who hopes to get involved in malpractice, in case you are clear court, you are culpable, and uh, you, you commit an offense, and you're not going to be very kind with you. There's another case still in Fort Porto, a school called where, uh, some school called West Bay, whereby the about twelve candidates did not write the examinations. 
According to the head teacher, he realized late that the candies were not in the album. These albums are generated by the schools themselves and uh, they begin submitting them just after registration. So the HM just realized that the candies were not registered, not in the album. What this basically mean? They have missed out on the examination. There are 12 of them. Quite unfortunate. Quite unfortunate. And we hope that. Uh, um, the police is going to follow up this case with the head teacher and the deputy head teacher to explain why the learners have missed the examination. Another school in Ritoma, uh, it's called Chinebe High School, also had missing candies 